Dragon's Dogma 2 was a game that got nearly universally glowing reviews pre-release from most major gaming outlets, but the user reviews tell a different story. Currently, Steam reviews are mixed, which isn't great for such a highly anticipated game, but back at release, it was mostly negative, which is yikes. The game's got an 87 average from critics and a 60 from users on Metacritic, so what exactly is happening here? Are the critics lying to us? Is this the biggest scandal of the century? Are we blowing this thing wide open? And, well, no, of course not. There are some concerns being thrown around that aren't entirely justified, at least in my opinion, but the core issue here is the PC port, and to put it frankly, it's a mess. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today we're going to talk about what exactly went wrong with the Dragon's Dogma 2 PC port. Like everybody who got an early copy of the game, our Before You Buy of Dragon's Dogma 2 went up March 20th, two days before official release. I had a lot of good things to say about it, and just to be clear, I stand by everything I said. But, and this is a big but, I played the PS5 version. And make no mistake, the performance, even on console, was one of my biggest complaints with the game. The uncapped 30 frames per second was mostly fine, but the game would slow down heavily in the main city, and performance would dip well below 30. I did say, compared to the original game, it's a lot better, but normally I expect butter smooth 60 frames per second from Capcom. Even with the power of the PS5, this game's performance was just not up to the regular standards. Overall, played pretty well. When it comes to 30 frames per second, some games pull it off, some can't. It's really up to the developers. Sometimes these games feel like swimming through molasses, it feels a lot slower, and some games manage to feel fine. Maybe it's that, again, I was used to the original game, but Dragon's Dogma 2 on PS5 is fine. It's not perfect, but it could be a lot, and I mean a lot, worse. I'm not trying to make excuses for the game here. I'm just trying to give this proper context from my perspective because the situation on PC is night and day. Like, I can happily play it on PS5, but when I finally sat down and gave the PC version a try, it's so much worse. And we're not talking slouch hardware here. I I'm playing this thing on an NVIDIA 4090, a brand new CPU, and plenty of RAM. This thing is still struggling on this system, and it should not be. It absolutely should not be. There's stuttering, there's slowdown, and if you're unlucky, there's pretty constant crashing, which is a problem in a game that gives you two types of saves, auto saves and in saves, which can only be done rarely. The idea that we would crash a lot when you don't have like the kind of control over saving that you need to feel, you know, safe on a basic level. You know, the root word of save. <laughs> I think that's the root. I don't know if that's the... Let me just look that up real quick. Oh, save. Keep safe. Okay, yeah. It's from the old French solver, which comes from the old Latin salvare, from the Latin salvus, which means safe. Yeah, you don't get any of that from how much this game crashes on PC. The thing is, performance isn't terrible when you're out in the open world. The frame rate is at least a lot more stable, but once you hit the main city, Vernworth, all bets are off. Performance in town can drop by, and I mean this, 50% or more. It's horrible. And the stuttering is something you can just, you, you just feel it nonstop. Even my nice hardware struggled to keep up with the game. And the problem seems to be coming from the CPU. The game is apparently very CPU dependent. It's what the game uses to calculate all the NPC data uh, and how they interact with the world. So any location with a lot of NPCs, like the main city Vernworth, it's gonna experience slowdown. The issue stems with how they've decided to build the game. And while it's something that can eventually get fixed, it's not gonna happen overnight. It's at least something Capcom is aware of. Uh, in a response to IGN, a representative from Capcom said, in Dragon's Dogma 2, a large amount of CPU usage is allocated to each character and dynamically calculates the impact of their physical presence in various environments. In certain situations where numerous characters appear simultaneously, the CPU usage can be very high and may affect frame rate. Uh, we are aware that in such situations, settings that reduce GPU load may have limited effect. However, we're looking for ways to improve performance in the future. They are not kidding about that. The frame rate uh, in NPC dense environments is almost entirely unaffected by lowering the graphics settings. You really just have to have a better CPU or like a server farm full of C like CPUs. I don't know. 
Can I rent some rack space so I can cloud compute Dragon's Dogma 2? I don't know. It's so bad that players are considering killing unnecessary NPCs to lower the load on the CPU. I don't know if this actually works, because even in death, NPCs still remain in the world. They're just corpses hanging out of the morgue. And so, I mean, maybe their AI would stop being processed, but I have to imagine physics aren't. So the calculations may still be floating around nearby. I, I don't know. I really don't know how it works in this game. From poking around Reddit, it looks like the killing uh, is kind of just jokey theory crafting. A lot of the posters in the thread aren't even replaying the game, as far as I can tell. But it's, it's pretty amusing to consider that this may be a legitimate solution that could alleviate some CPU load. It's worked in other games, so why wouldn't it work here? I, I don't really know. I'm not trying to fix the game here. Capcom is. They have promised fixes for the PC. Uh, the first promised patch is more about addressing petty grievances than fixing performance, but I do expect pretty significant performance patches to follow. It's an unusual thing because Capcom's PC ports are sometimes pretty excellent, sometimes they're a big old mess. It's not even an engine thing. Resident Evil 4 Remake uses the RE engine, DOI, Resident Evil engine. Uh, but Dragon's Dogma 2 also uses it, so eh. It's a less than stellar port, let's just say. It, it is a more ambitious game, huge open world, a lot more going on under the surface, but if we're talking visuals alone, it should perform at least better than it is. It's hardly an ugly game. It's got some really good visual design, fantastic visual design even. But honestly, by today's standards, it's kind of modest. It really just doesn't look like a system melter that's going to push your PC to the very limit. But it is, and that's kind of disappointing. I did mention that it's mostly from the PC port's performance issues. Um, there is, however, a lot of anger around the game's microtransactions. Uh, but I don't want to say a lot about that. I don't want to dwell on it. Because I think a lot of the early fears about it ended up being mostly unfounded. Uh, that isn't to say the microtransactions in the game are great or anything. In a perfect world, I'd prefer they didn't exist at all. And in fact, if they weren't around, the game probably would have got a warmer reception overall. Performance issues on the PC port excluded, of course. Um, but what's stuck in people's craws about the microtransactions in this game is that they were selling port crystals, which are rare items that you can uh, place and teleport to, and art of metamorphosis books, which allow you to completely change your appearance. Both of these items are rare and expensive to get in the main game, and in the case of the metamorphosis book, you can only get a very limited amount. It felt like Capcom nickel and diming players who want to mess around with the character's appearance, which they were, so it's nice that the first patch is addressing it by making it so you can buy 99 of them at the pawn vendor. The port crystal situation might sound bad looking from the outside in, but it's nothing to get particularly worked up over, I don't think anyway. The game gives you these things fairly consistently, and you can't teleport that much anyway because it requires another rare item called a fairy stone. Um, if you need to get around quickly, there's ox carts that go around the world. They're cheap, they take you to most major towns, so in my opinion, it's not some pay to win situation uh, because it's not something you desperately need to buy. It doesn't really introduce do some massive change in the dynamic of the game to buy them. Would I prefer Capcom just cut microtransactions from single player games entirely? Absolutely. But as far as these things go, I, I wouldn't call this stuff egregious. There's no in-game store like the many Ubisoft games. The currency you can buy called Rift Crystals, they're plentiful in the actual game. There's, there's no reason really to ever spend money on this stuff. It's convenience and it's not major convenience in my opinion. Like Resident Evil 4 Remake had the exact same kinds of microtransactions, and the game has overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam, so I, I don't think that's really what's the problem here. It might feel like more of a problem because the game isn't in great shape, but I think if the game was in great shape, people really wouldn't be talking about them. Like, I'm just gonna be real here, it's the performance. There's nothing else. There's other complaints, of course. The lack of enemy variety and build variety, the fairly basic story, lack of fast travel options. These are all valid complaints. I did think this would be something of a polarizing game. I mentioned it a few times, and that seems to be the case. There are frustrating things about Dragon's Dogma 2, and a few minor ways where it's a step down from the original game, but there's also a lot where it's much better and overall more interesting. The polarizing stuff, it's ultimately kinda taste. I really think Dragon's Dogma 2 is a fantastic game, and I'm even gonna say this, even with all the PC issues, the frame rate is still a hell of a lot better than the original Xbox 360 game before they let you install games on the hard drive. 
But is that really an excuse? No. The Dragon's Dogma 2 PC port is bad. It's something PC players are getting sick of, too. Particularly, I play more games on the PC. Like, the fact I did this on the PS5, and actually often do before you buy on the PS5, a lot of that just has to do with the simplicity and assurance that I'm not going to hit the kinds of issues like this. Like, I want to play the game. I want to give an opinion that's at least most relevant and can stay the most relevant for the longest period of time. And hopefully they fix all of these issues. Like developers and publishers keep treating this massive PC player base kind of like second class citizens. These types of ports are not good enough anymore. I like PC gaming. I like it better than console gaming. But it's also PC games where I consistently encounter basic troubleshooting issues. It, like seemingly obvious and what seems like should be solvable things like resolution. It's a constant annoyance while playing games on the PC. And I'm willing to do a little extra work and a little research to figure out what's wrong and fix it. I'm getting tired of every new PC port uh, being a new puzzle to solve. With a console game, I can pop in a disc or download it and play it. But on PC, eh, I'm often trudging through Steam posts, finding the issue, or what I hope is the issue, rather. We shouldn't have to rely on modders to fix our games for us. And that's seemingly what it's come down to. Prolific modder, Pure Dark, put out a frame generation mod the day of release. And it improves the overall frame rate. But to be frank, frame generation is not going to fix a CPU bottleneck. And it doesn't fix the frame drop problems that lead to stuttering. I mean, it does improve it. And that's definitely appreciated and good on Pure Dark. But it shouldn't be on Pure Dark. As it stands, it's just not possible to recommend Dragon's Dogma 2 on PC at the moment. The performance just isn't there. Even when the frame rate is high, it doesn't feel right to play because there's persistent stuttering and the entire experience gets dragged down by that. But the miserable frame rate in Vernworth, which is, by the way, your main hub, it's a significant portion of uh, where the quests take place. It, it's not excusable. This city is unavoidable. So no matter what, you're dealing with massive frame rate drops that at least at the moment cannot be fixed. It's a real shame because on the PS5, um, the performance is at least consistent. And this is a great game there. It's a flawed one, but it's again, like I said, a really unique experience that provides something that really isn't available anywhere else. Dragon's Dogma is its own thing, and it just, it was not ready for PC. Fortunately, knowing Capcom, it is at least safe to assume the game will remain supported, so the performance will probably improve in future patches, but I don't know how long that's going to take, and neither do you. Maybe they don't even know it. If you really want to play this game, and if you liked the original Dragon's Dogma, I'm going to say you're going to like this one. If you're looking for something unique and weird and a little off the beaten path, but also it doesn't stray so far from modern gaming conventions that it feels bad. It's a great game and playing it on the PS5 will provide you the ability to play it without interruption. Maybe in a year, the PC version will be playable, uh, but until that's the case, I would avoid it like the plague. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, at FalconTheHero. We'll see you next time, right here on Game Ranks.